Bonjour. So hello, everyone. Uh, let me give you then uh, the information for translation. Um, you have on the bottom down of your screen, you have an icon of a globe. Um, on the bottom right, that, that's where you have to click and choose uh, English for this session. And you will all, always hear English independent on uh, the language of the floor. Uh, I'll say the same thing in French and Spanish as well. Donc, bonjour à tous à nouveau. Euh, vous avez euh, en bas à droite de votre écran euh, un icône qui ressemble à un globe, comme celui que vous voyez sur euh, votre écran. Si vous cliquez dessus, euh, c'est comme ça que vous pourriez choisir euh, euh, français et écouter euh, aussi bien l'interprétation simultanée en français euh, que les interventions en français. Je vais dire la même chose en espagnol et euh, on va bientôt commencer. Euh, hola a todos y todas, et bienvenidos. Et, solo para avisarles, si quieren escuchar la interpretación simultánea, euh, siempre en espagnol, cuando, o, la, o la interpretación, o cuando haya personas que, que hablen en, en espagnol, hay que seleccionar este icono que ven ahí en la pantalla. Euh, euh, comme un, de un globo terrestre, et sélectionner espagnol. Um, OK, so now, um, just before uh, we get into the session, and I present to you um, all of your, uh, all of the facilitators and our agenda, um, I will give the floor for a second to Sonia. Um, who will take us to a quick breathing exercise so that we um, get ourselves uh, present in the session and in the conversation we're about to have. Um, Sonia, can you? Thank you, Joyce. Yes, great. Hello, everybody. I invite you all to join me in a short exercise. It will last uh, approximately two minutes. So please sit as comfortably as you can or lie down. Close your eyes and be aware of how your body touches the surface. Invite your body to be soft and to rest now. Surrender into relaxation. Move your awareness to your breath. Follow the gentle tide of your breath without altering it. Just, just watch it. Imagine that you are standing somewhere outside in the nature. Your feet are on the ground. You are surrounded by a lost forest. You can feel the sun shining on your body. You can hear bees humming and birds singing. You can smell the wildflowers and the green grass. You feel relaxed and calm. Notice the beauty around you. Notice the beauty inside of you. Gently notice your body against the surface again. Become aware of your breath without Opening your eyes, become aware of your surroundings. When you feel ready, stretch your arms long overhead and extend your legs and open your eyes. The exercise is over. I will now hand you over to Joyce and she will introduce the next thing to happen. Thank you. Thanks so much, um, Sonia. It was just super useful um, for us to um, be aware of uh, ourselves and our breathing and really get uh, fully uh, into the conversation that we're about to have. So what I'm going to, to do now is to very quickly introduce the three uh, organizations that are facilitating this call um, and then hand over uh, to to them so that they introduce themselves as well. Uh, as you might know, this session is part of the Forum's virtual forum. 
so it's a one session out of 10 that we will be organizing uh, for a week. This is the first day. Um, for those of you uh, who haven't been, haven't had the opportunity to be there this morning, it was a lovely conversation about power shift. Um, and we went for two hours on the need to understand and recognize um, our role as political actors in civil society. Um, so this makes for a great continuation uh, with this session where we're going to talk about the power of networks. But first things first, um, to introduce for us to those of you who don't know uh, the organization, we're an international network. And that means that, uh, that an, an international network of networks. That means there are members of national or regional networks. Um, so the su subject of this conversation is really um, the core of our identity. Our uh, mission is, is uh, portrayed in our, in our strap line, connect and your networks, support and develop capacity of our members, and influence public policies. Uh, but in this session, we also have two great organizations uh, with whom for a share several core principles, uh, including the ones of participation and horizontality, uh, as well as this strong desire for a transformative and powerful civil society. So the first of them is uh, Bridge 47, who is a global network of people engaging with transformative, transformative learning in different ways around the world. Uh, Bridge 47 um, works a lot with global, global citizenship education, using it as a tool um, and so that people reflect upon their assumptions, make informed decisions and demand policies. We also have um, Tamarin Tree Associates, uh, who is a team of organization development practitioners working to support social change organizations. Uh, they work bringing people into new kinds of conversation, support learning from each other, and strengthen creative, imaginative, and compassionate alternatives. Uh, I'm going to give the floor uh, for uh, a couple of minutes, uh, for um, five to 10 minutes to each one of them, uh, so that they share with us uh, their uh, their values, their beliefs, how they do things, and how they see learning uh, in networks. So um, the first one to take the floor will be uh, Novula Glamini from uh, Tamarin Tree Association. Over to you, Novula. Hello, everybody. Uh, greetings from Cape Town in South Africa, where we are based. Um, I am one of the senior associates of the organization and I've spent uh, the last uh, probably two decades of my life working in civil society. Um, I'm not going to give a very brief, a big presentation. I'm just going to share with you um, the, the, the deep values that inform the work of, of Tamarant, uh, Tamarant 3. We believe very strongly that in order to make a difference in the world, we have to build organizations that are humane and that are caring, particularly if, we, if you work in the social change uh, landscape. Um, I think all of us know that it is not only what organizations do that changes the world, but the kinds of organizations that we create and the way in which we organize ourselves as people and as organizations around different issues, around an intersection of, of issues is what really determines the nature and quality of human society. So for us, the kinds of organizations we create is critically important. And for our networks are a particular kind of organization because when we form networks, when we build networks, what do we do? We organize ourselves in particular ways. But just, just, just to say something about the networks that we build and that we are a, a part of. 
Um, for us, this the, the civil society networks are, are different from other networks. When you are a civil society network, there are certain things that you really need to bear in mind. There are certain things that need to become the focus of, um, of your work. So if you want to effect social change and you are part of civil society, you have to bear in mind that civil society is a subsystem of, of society. And what makes civil society important is that it is the space for the voice of citizens, for the voice of people. In the opening session, a lot was said about, um, about the voice of, of citizens. And not only the voice of citizens, because there are also times when citizens are very voiceless. We have experiences more recently of how voiceless citizens can be. So it's the space for the voice of civil society and our work as social change organizations, we focus more on turning it into a space that can empower particularly the voiceless. But civil society, that particular space in which all of us work is also important because it gives identity and meaning to the needs of people, of citizens, to the struggles of citizens, to the aspirations of citizens, to the intentions of citizens, and to the contributions of, of citizens. So when we work in, this, in civil society as a space, as a subsystem of, of society, and we engage with citizens and we engage with the people, we need to be very, very conscious of the space that we create for the voice of the people, for their identity and how do we give meaning to their needs, to their aspirations and to their struggles. But let me come back to civil society networks. I just want to say three things, a couple of things about civil society uh, networks. And, and this is what we deeply believe in and this is what we take into our work with civil society organizations. First and foremost, um, a network is a collaborative organizational form, which means when you go into networking or when you establish a network, you first and foremost make a commitment that you will work beyond the boundaries of your own organization. So that is the first thing. You take yourselves into a space beyond those boundaries, whether they are fixed, the boundaries of your organization or whether they are not uh, are fixed. So you work beyond that. And you're also making a commitment to work towards a higher social cause. You don't narrowly focus on the mission and purpose of your own organization, but those that you connect with through your networking, you together, make a decision to find a bigger social cause, something that is bigger than my organization that we can work towards, right? But where does the real challenge lie if we are civil society networks work, whose work is aimed at effecting social change? First and foremost, civil society networks, you ha we have to be a disruptive force in our context. And when I say a disruptive force, in order to effect social change, you have to be a disruptive force. So you have to have a transformative change agenda. There has to be some very forceful action to alter the systems that exclude, the systems that entrench inequality, the systems that marginalize. Um, so, so, we have to change those systems that exclude, marginalize, that, that result in, in inequality. Uh, um, so our work has to be that kind of force. It really has to be a transformative change force. So as a network, you need to think very carefully. So what is the transformative or the transformation agenda that we are driving in order to effect social change. 
So that's one of the things that you need to be, to be thinking about. Um, in the previous, uh, in the opening session, Glenn was speaking about, we need to understand the, the political economy. And I just want to emphasize that, that as a civil society network, you really need to have and to sustain a critical, in other words, through your work, you need to be questioning all the time, a critical, progressive, and politically conscious framework of ideas and practical program of action. Right. So there has to be a politically conscious framework of ideas that informs your program of action. And the program of action that we develop has to be coherent, it has to be responsive, and to connect to what one of the previous speakers in the opening session said, it has to be a program of, of action that follows the people. Right. So... And, and, and that framework of ideas and, and practical program of, of action needs to be developed by the collective, right? Thirdly, if you are a civil society network whose work is aimed at bringing about social change, then that interface, that, that connectivity, that engagement with citizens, with the people is very important. And, and I think, a lot of us have got experience of sometimes our organizations become so focused on what we are doing and we become disconnected from, from, uh, from the people, we become disconnected from the citizens. That, uh, we need to tap into, there's a couple of things that we need to tap into in our interface, in our engagement with the people, with the citizens. There's a dynamic energy. And now during the times of COVID-19, we have seen that energy and it has, it has really excited us. It's a, it's a localized, it's based at grassroots level. We have seen that, that energy. So how do we connect to the dynamic energy of citizens? How do we connect to the agency of citizens? How do we connect to the resilience? How do we connect to the power of, of, of the people and the people do have power. Some of the things that I've seen in my own context in here in South Africa is that there is a people's power. And if we connect to the people's power, we can really uh, change, uh, change things about. I want to end by saying that um, the, the challenges that, that human societies are facing across the world, the challenges have become Nogula, I'm I'm so sorry to interrupt you. I think you might have muted yourself just a second ago. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. really sorry. I must have muted myself. Sorry, I I'm really sorry. I I I I use my hands a lot. So the, the, the other uh, point I want to raise is that as, as civil society networks, there is no way uh, uh, we really need to work through creative collaborations, whether it is creative collaborations within civil society itself, whether it is creative uh, uh, collaborations between the civil society subsystem and the state and government or private sector or tertiary institutions. But where we are now and the challenges that we are facing, these challenges have become very, very big. We, we, can't, uh, we can't address them on, on our own. So how do we begin to build uh, um, creative collaborations that will allow us to co-create the solutions. And those creative collaborations include collaborations with, um, with, with the citizens themselves. So how connected do we, do we how connected are we to, to, to the citizens, to the people? Uh, um, wherever the people, wherever the people are, and what are the creative relationships that we are building with the people, with other formations of civil society. One of the big challenges uh, um, over the last couple of years was how do we be, uh, how do we build creative relationships between uh, um, more traditional and institutionalized non-governmental organizations and social movements and grassroots advocacy groups and other interest groups that focus on climate change. So 
how do we build these creative uh, relationships with other with other actors right and and finally as, as, as civil society networks, if we truly are to realize uh, um, our, our, our power or, uh, or, or make a contribution of positive contribution or effect social change in our, in our context, then the big challenge is how do we change the power equation between citizens and other formations? And other social and other social actors. We are very cognizant of the power imbalances, but we cannot say we have contributed to social change if we have not, if we are not making a contribution towards changing the power equation. And Len in the opening session reminded us that. We need to understand the fragmentation of power. We need to do a power analysis if we are truly, truly to change uh, the power equation. Joyce, am I still within my time? Sure. Do you want to add any final remarks? I just want to say that our challenge then as, as, as civil society networks, having highlighted some of these, uh, uh, some of these uh, factors and issues that I think are critical since we, if, if we genuinely want to say that our, our role and our contribution is towards effecting and bringing about social change in our respective con context, then a final challenge that we, we need to face is we need to make sure that our work and our engagements open space for new ideas, new thinking, and as Glenn said, new language, new approaches, and new practices. So where is our where is our social innovation? We need to to create space for 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 social innovation because opening space for new ideas, thinking, language approaches, and practicing comes through our ability and and our uh, our commitment to to innovate. Uh, so that we don't get stuck in old language, old approaches, old methods, old old thinking. Um, so I leave it at that. And this was just to spark the conversation as the process unfolds. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you so much, Novula. Thank you for reminding us of our commitment to work beyond our organization. And thank you for challenging us to undertake these creative solutions. Let me now give the floor then to Alan from uh, Bridge 47. Alan, are you, are you with us? Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah? Okay, great. Thank you, Joyce, and thank you, Nambula, for, for a great contribution. I believe we are uh, in so many things on very much the same page. Uh, my name is Alan Maletic, and I will uh, share a couple of words from our side uh, on behalf of Bridge 47 Network, what we believe in and how we do things. So uh, the Bridge 47 Network was created to really build bridges between people, initiatives, organizations, working with uh, different types of transformative education. That's why taking name from the target 4.7 of the sustainable development goals, so bridging, educations and 47. Uh, right now the network is supported by a project that is co-created by 15 European and global civil society organizations. But what do we mean by transformative education? Often when we say education many people just tend to disconnect uh, because they think education is something that just happens in schools. Uh, you enter into that building, you learn and then you leave and then you stop learning. Of course, no one can deny that schools are very, very important, but schools are just one part uh, to it. We really learn throughout life and in a huge diversity of contexts. So really when we talk about transformative education, which is what the SDG target 4.7 is all about, we talk about learning with citizens and engaging citizens of all ages to really contribute to some kind of change. So it's really about building active global citizenship. And that is where we as civil society networks have a huge role, regardless of what field of activity uh, we deal with. When we are doing capacity buildings, trainings, workshops, events, 
whenever we are building dialogue with citizens, really, uh, we are doing a kind of transformative education. So civil society networks have traditionally and still today, they play a massive role in raising awareness on the very many issues our societies face. But we really, we need to think how to go a step forward. So really, thanks to civil society, among others, uh, the awareness, for example, around the climate change has never been as high as today. Of course, it can always get better. But how do we take it step forward? How do we talk about it, among other things, in a way that that doesn't, that doesn't just um, end up with people feeling paralyzed or overwhelmed or just powerless about it, um, but rather how do we trigger something in them? How do we challenge them to maybe reflect and maybe change something, uh, a habit of two or theirs, or just that it brings some kind of change? Um, of course, nobody can do everything, but if everyone does at least something, the world will already start being and looking like a really, really different place. How do we do that in Bridge 47? Um, we put a huge emphasis on methodologies, processes, and facilitations. And we really believe that how we do things can sometimes better define us than uh, what we do. Vibrant networks, uh, we believe, collect most energy from across the network and then channel it through some kind of goal. So really, we are looking at ways how to engage and energize uh, people, how to invite people to care more uh, when organizing events, workshops, trainings, online or offline. We really put big emphasis on participation, on dialogue, on co-creation. So really, we invite people to co-create programs of events to, to bring their ideas, to decide where the event is going uh, themselves, using really creative methodologies to really stimulate not only the cognitive, so not only passing information and preaching, but rather be, instead of sage on the stage, rather guide on the side and facilitate and try to also affect the socio-emotional part, uh, emotions and uh, hearts, minds and bodies, so all three. Uh, together. Um, people care most about probably what they create themselves and it's really important to share power. We really re rely on members in our network to be multipliers, to take action and pass the learnings into their context, their organizations, their networks. Of course, dialogue with citizens uh, and people is uh, also a learning process that it's a two-way stream. So we need to be a civil society also very open to learnings and reflecting how we do things too. Um, the importance of self-criticism is really crucial and we have to admit that we cannot possibly uh, do everything by ourselves and especially not the best way. So we, we do need, uh, we need each other. In our network, there is also a very rich diversity of cultural and professional backgrounds. There are people from around the world with very, very different um, expertise and enthusiasm for different things, but really sharing this passion for uh, transformative learning. So there are policy specialists, there are teachers, there are students, there are researchers, um, activists, there are even some business people. So really many, many different um, um, many different experience, life experiences from around the world. So this is really crucial, we believe, for people to challenge each other and to, to, to force each other to kind of uh, employ multiple perspectives on the same things, to put, each, to put themselves in each other's shoes. Uh, and by doing that, maybe come up with more creative and more sustainable solutions to, to, to some uh, challenges that we might face. So, uh, sometimes it might be also good to uh, engage with those that we don't necessarily agree with, which is not always the most comfortable step to take, but it might be very fruitful. Uh, maybe the last, one of the last things I would say, also the importance of uh, everything being very interconnected and interdependent, uh, just as we are as human beings. Uh, we believe in Bridge 47 that we really need to employ systems-based thinking instead of sometimes jumping into discussions, this policy area is more important or this, and just looking narrowly at our own field. Um, uh, 
it's not either or, it is both and even more. So really to change everything, we need everybody. And we really need to strive for this principle because the more people we bring on board, the more long-term and sustainable solutions we can come up with. And in these really ever urgent times where we are running after deadlines and um, uh, catching to, to fulfill all the criteria and um, jumping from one meeting into another, there is less and less time for this kind of consensus-based decision-making and solutions. And that's really a pity because in, in other sense, it also means that maybe processes are getting less and less democratic. All right, maybe I would stop here. This would be some of the key principles and ways of working that are guiding our journey in the Bridge 47 network. Um, maybe the last thing I would finish with, uh, you probably have heard so many times that saying, if you wanna go fast, go alone. But if you really wanna go far, go together. Are we truly willing to risk our comfort zones to go even further? Thank you. Thank you so much, Helen. Um, thank you for uh, reminding us that um, system thinking and hearing citizens is really at the center of uh, transformative education. And since you very well put it, um, how we do things best define who we are, I'm going to use that as a segue to present to everyone um, our continuation of the session, which is going to be a very participatory session. Uh, so throughout the call, uh, you can click on the, um, on the list of participants. And if you have the list of participants open, you can raise your hand whenever you want to take the floor. Um, you can also write questions in the chat box. Uh, and then uh, from now on to the end of the call, what we're going to do is that we're going to uh, take the time to do three different exercises and then get back to plenary. The first exercise is going to be uh, an imagination one. We're going to be looking into uh, wishes and taking really the time to imagine um, the future a bit. Um, as, uh, as in the preparations call, calls we were discussing, we, we have to create this time for imagination because we didn't, we didn't yet do everything we could do. Uh, so in this fast and deadline world, um, it's important that we make the time for that. So that's our first exercise. Our second exercise is uh, a writing one uh, that uh, will give ourselves a space to look inside, to, to hear our own experiences and learnings. And then the third one will be the moment to exchange ideas, to go a bit into action, to talk about what needs to be done. We're going to do that both in breaking groups and also in plenary afterwards. Uh, a couple of one very important technical information is that so that we are able to start organizing those exercises. We know that there are people in the call speaking three different languages at least. Um, so what I want to invite you to do is to open the participant list that you will see when you put the mouse at the bottom of your screen, you should have a whole, uh, some options appear. And then you click on the participant screen uh, list, sorry, you will see everyone. Um, so if you want to join those um, exercises in French, you put a green check by your name and then just leave it there. Um, I'm going to repeat that just in French. Um, si vous voulez participer des prochains exercices, uh, de participation qu'on aura par la suite dans la conversation en français. On va vous demander de uh, cliquer sur le check vert um, sur la liste de participants. Vous pouvez déjà le faire à partir de maintenant. Um, and so now I'm switching to Spanish. Um, bueno, ahora en español, uh, entonces lo mismo um, en, en español, si, eh, para el, eh, el X rojo, si quieren participar a los ejercicios participativos y grupos de, de, de debates y todo eso en español, les pido que pongan ya desde ahora una X roja al lado de su nombre y que la dejen ahí y nosotros vamos a organizar eh, los grupos a partir de ahora con eso. 
Um, okay, then back to English. If you have any trouble with finding the X's and checks, just write us in the chat box and we'll try to organize that. Um, but that was the small um, technical uh, info. And to get back to the three exercises I was mentioning, so the imagination one, the uh, writing one and the groups, uh, I'm going to first then give the floor back to Sonia uh, to guide us through um, an imagination exercise. Thank you so much, Sonia. Thank you, Joyce. Now I will invite you all again to join me in an exercise. Uh, it will last around five minutes, perhaps a little bit longer. So sit yourself comfortably on your chair, or if you have the opportunity, lay down on your couch or on the floor. Close your eyes and listen to the sound of my voice. Keep your eyes closed. Notice the way your body touches the surface. Adjust it a little if needed. Be comfortable with your eyes closed. Now notice your breath. How the air moves in and out of your body. Now try to breathe in and out through your nose. You can imagine that you are blowing up a balloon in your belly. Clinch your fists tight, very tight, and release them again. Try to make all muscles in your body tight now, very, very tight, and Release them again. Visit your breath. Don't change it. Just notice your breath. Let it be. Think about a network. It can be any network. Notice this network, its relations, the people in it. It can be citizens from all corners of our beautiful world. Just notice it. Let it be. Move yourself upwards towards the clouds. Fly sky high. Look down. You see a new network. You have never noticed it before. It shines like gold. It is a newborn network. It doesn't have any relations yet. Now imagine which relations could be the very best it could have. Take a moment to imagine these good relations. Fly to the next cloud and look down on the newborn shining network. Doesn't have any aims or objectives yet. Imagine which target could be the best for this new network. And aim as high as you can. Take a moment to imagine the best and transformative objective for this network. Now move yourself lower and look at the new project. It has not learned anything yet. Imagine what the most important issues this network could learn about. Don't be shy. Go sky high with your dream. Take a moment to imagine the important issues that the persons in this network could learn from each other. Move yourself closer to the network and admire the citizens relating to each other. Enjoy how the network is working to meet the sky high goals. 
amuse yourself when you see how everybody in the network is learning from each other. Flow slowly a little bit closer to this brand new exciting network. Now you see that a large group of citizens has noticed the network. They are coming closer. They are curious. Watch how the network opens itself and shares its transformative objective with the citizens. The people want to engage with it and make it even better. Watch how the network starts to create strong relations with the citizens and share different kinds of concerns. Learning from them and with them by talking and interacting Now, imagine a fun new way that the network and the citizens share their knowledge with each other. Think with your bones and emotions. How much fun sharing knowledge can be. Take a moment to imagine how they share knowledge in this new innovative way. Notice how they start learning from each other how they copy each other. Look at them, enjoying, learning and sharing. Look how the outreach of the network grows. Now, breathe into your belly and feel that great feeling moving out and coming in. Feel your belly moving in and out. You're wonderful, special, and the world needs you. When you're ready, Open your eyes, look around. Perhaps starting moving your body a little. The exercise is now over. Thank you so much for joining. Thanks so much. Um... Sonia, thank you for, um, for getting us through uh, this exercise uh, that helps us create space uh, to imagine uh, and to dream, um, imagining the kind of networks uh, towards which uh, we would like to go. Uh, I will now invite uh, Nuvula to come back and guide us um, with uh, the next exercise. Thanks, Nuvula. Thanks, Sonia. I, I'm, I'm almost begrudging having to come back <laughs> to, to, to this reality, yeah. I now invite um, you to participate in a free writing um, exercise. And it is exactly that, free writing. So I don't want anybody to have any anxieties about what am I going to write. I just want to say to you, trust it, the stuff will come. Um, we use free writing in different ways. We use it to brainstorm ideas, uh, thoughts. Um, we also use it to help um, leaders, to help uh, people, to help practitioners to connect to their own experience. I am now going to invite you whether you write on your, on your laptop, on your computer, on your phone, some people have got very sophisticated phones, or whether you are the type who prefers to write using a, a pen and paper, please feel free to, to use whatever, uh, to do it whichever way uh, works for you. 
Um, very briefly, free writing is a writing technique uh, that we use for the purposes that I have, uh, I have mentioned. For this particular activity, we are going to use prompts that we are going to provide that we have developed and they are very simple uh, prompts that uh, we are going to use. Um, the, the technique, what makes free writing interesting is that you write without stopping, right? You don't think too much about what do I want to say? No, you just kind of go with the flow and whatever comes writes. And if nothing comes, you write the prompt over and over again until something comes, right? So we are, it's going to help you to access the less conscious thoughts, ideas, feelings, and insights. Don't filter, don't think too much, don't censor yourself, just write. And thank you for the activity that Sonia took us through. We are calm. So wherever you are, make sure if you are seated in a chair that your feet are firmly on the floor. Um, you're sitting straight up in your chair. Um, Unfortunately, it's not the activity that you can do lying on your couch or on the, you can lie on the floor because you can write on the floor, but you can be doing this lying in your, in your bed. So those who are in the your beds, try to sit up and find a comfortable uh, space, right? Here we go. We're going to use two prompts. Joyce, there you are. So we're connecting to our own practice, to our own experience. Drawing from my experience of building, supporting, and working with networks. Prompt number one is, I see their unique strengths and contributions as. We have got four minutes, right? It's 19 past four minutes, write down the prompt, drawing from my experience of building, supporting and working with networks. I see the unique strengths and contributions as, and whatever comes, start writing.
One more minute. And thank you. Ivana, can we ask that you move us to the second prompt, please? It's going to be also for four minutes. Drawing from my experience of building, supporting, and working with networks, issues that can undermine their, their effectiveness, that is the effectiveness of networks are. And you have another four minutes and write whatever comes. One more minute. Thank you. Thanks, Ivana.
You now have uh, one minute. If you can quickly read through, if you can quickly read through for the next minute, read through what you have written. And you can highlight or underline anything that you think that you think is interesting that strikes you that has come out of your writing and whatever you have is going to be the source from which you are going to be sharing in the next activity so just read through it anything that strikes you it might be a word that keeps on coming up it might be a phrase um it might be a concept that has come up through your writing. Uh, uh, and don't worry, that writing is for you. It's not going to be <laughs> read by anybody at this point in time, but later on there's going to be an invitation. Yeah. From what, from the, the exercise that Sonia has taken you through, imagining to what you have generated through the free writing, you are now ready for the next activity. Over to you, Joyce. Thanks so much, Novola. Um, I hope you all had the opportunity to collect a bit of thoughts. And as Novola said, we will invite you to bring them uh, to the next part of, your se of our session. That was the reason why we asked you to um, identify um, if you wanted to speak uh, French, English, or Spanish. We already have the groups uh, organized, but I'll get back to that in a second. Let me first uh, invite Ellen. Uh, to explain to us uh, the exercise uh, in which we're going to go into breakup groups and how we're going to harvest on that. Over to you, Alan. Thank you, Joyce. So <clears throat> in the next exercise, after having gone through imagination and some dreaming exercise and reflecting on our previous experiences, now we will have a chance to exchange with other participants about our experiences and also maybe um, come up with some ideas uh, on what could be done. So the questions that you will be discussing in small groups up to six people uh, or less depending on, on the language as well will be what principles should we be defending to bring social change and what ways of working and being should we be rethinking? I will paste the questions in the uh, chat box, but you will also have them uh, in another place that I will show right now. Uh, in every group, if it is possible, uh, if you could select or if someone could volunteer to be a facilitator, that would be amazing, just to make sure there is no awkward silence and uh, that we all have in each group one post-it per group uh, where um, you can summarize the key ideas, the key uh, inspiration that you, that you came up with in the group, key solutions, key proposals, key invitations, whatever you feel like, you can uh, write together in the post. So please, one post it per group. I will show you the tool where you will be able to, to, to write post-its in a second. So this is the tool, it is called Padlet. Maybe some of you are already uh, familiar with it. So it is, it is like a virtual uh, cork board and to write a post-it, you just have to click on this plus in the lower right corner. And when you click on it, the post-it will open. As the title, you can write, um, you, you can invent a name for your group, um, whatever you feel like. And then you can in bullet points or however you feel like you can uh, then write down your ideas here. 
uh, you will have around 25 uh, minutes for discussions. And just please uh, don't forget to write a post-it on uh, Padlet. We will copy paste the link to it in a second. All right. Um, if uh, that is all clear, I would um, maybe pass the word back to Joyce. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you, Alan. Uh, and thanks so much to the colleagues uh, from Forest who are uh, really organizing that uh, in the backstage. We're going to send it to the breakout groups in a second. But if there are, uh, we, we managed to organize them by, by language. But if there are any mistakes and in, in by any chance you end up in a group that uh, is not of your language, uh, you can write to the two emails that I'm sharing right now in the screen. Hopefully that won't be needed, but just in case um, you'll be able to do that. Uh, at the end of the group, you will receive a two minute warning that the group will end automatically. So that means uh, that um, you will be brought back to, to plenary. Uh, as Alan said, you'll have 25 minutes. So I'll ask Arturo please to uh, launch the groups. And if there's, um, let's just wait for a second. Okay, we're still in plenary. Yes, looks like we're still in plenary. We're going uh, per language to the groups. So just a second, and um, you can already click on, on the Padlet and test uh, adding a post-it onto there. I think the Spanish ones. There are a few of you still in the main uh, room. Oh, we're just uh, moving you to the rooms as we speak. Sorry for that. Okay, let me just check. It seems that everyone that is uh, now in plenary is either from Forest or an interpreter. If that's not your case, can you send us a message on the chat? Um, seems like we're good. Novula, you're still in plenary, perhaps. Do you want to go to a group? Huh.
Joyce, I have opted to sit out. I just need to connect to my colleague, Doug Rilla, very quickly. Oh, okay. That's fine.
Are they coming back, Joyce? Yeah. It's in about a minute or so or less. Hmm. Ten seconds. I just got a message. It will bring them back automatically. There's a lot, um, a lot of inputs in the link. That's fantastic. Mm. That's a good thing, isn't it? Yeah, sure. Let me put it again here. The most uh, in English, actually. Ah. Yeah, you can check them. Okay. Oh, actually, hmm. I'm getting two different information because Sarah just said two minute countdown started in her group. So it should be that actually, the two minute countdown. So we have two minutes to check the, um, the table. So since we are a bit uh, behind and we might want to leave space for people to speak, if you want to give them 20 minutes, um, we can ask them already about, instead of uh, providing feedback from uh, the groups, just telling us the one important takeaway wow. so directly to that. Wow. Is that okay? Wow. Yeah. Is that okay with you if we do that? Oh, well. If we do what, Joyce? Ask directly for the one main takeaway. We're having participants back. Um, let me just explain in, in, in Spanish in a second. Um, hola, bienvenidos de vuelta. Pienso que tienen que elegir de nuevo su lengua español para escuchar la traducción cuando vuelvan de los grupos. Abajo a derecha, en la pantalla. Está bien. Um, so we are receiving people back. Let's just uh, wait for a second. Um, I think everyone is back now. Um, okay, Unubula, so then uh, over to you. We don't have a lot. Do we just want each, each group to briefly share? Yes, we could. Um, we could ask, uh, since we have had only four groups mm. uh, and we have the entire input from them in the table, yeah. now we're asking yeah. individual contributions. So what we could ask is that each person just... We are back, by the way. That's, yes. Yes, uh, we can. <laughs> we are, I'm also talking to you. Um, yeah. We could ask you is to just share one main takeaway per person. Yeah. And just raise your hands and... And go ahead yeah. whenever you want. Yeah, yeah. And tell a bit about your group. I think we should say thank you very much. I've just looked at what what has come out of the group work, and it looks it looks very interesting and and exciting. Uh, so thank you very much. We would like to spend the next um, ten minutes. Right, we would like to spend the, the the next ten minutes just for some concluding insights. If you have a question, if you have a, a takeaway, something that was a, a real, uh, um, even if it was not a new learning, but something that has been confirmed for you. Um, so we're not a, a big group and I, I don't think that everybody will necessarily want to speak, but uh, it would be nice to hear some people bring their voices into the space. Any concluding comment it can be a question, it can be an insight, it can be something that was uh, re, that was reconfirmed for you. Uh, so this is a space for people to just uh, to share for the next 10 minutes, yeah. So please show your hand. I have people who will help me to look at the hands that are going up. Or if some people would like to 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 just drop some thoughts in the in the 
in the in the chat that's also uh, fine uh, do we have uh, christina any any final concluding thought any takeaway anything that you would like to share please just un unmute yourself and go ahead and share inessa do you have something you look like you want to say something I always can say something, but maybe I can pass um, pass to uh, Ivana because uh, we saw that she might uh, have have some some uh, thoughts on that, and then uh, yeah, maybe I can add on or not. No. No, you you feel free. You can say you can say something. Don't don't can add on. Uh, don't limit yourself. Yeah, anything. Yeah. For me, uh, actually, what um, uh, what I was really amazed was um, about example from Myanmar, uh, because uh, we talk when we talked about principles, um, we started somehow to think that uh, in a way we look for common words at international level, but on the other hand, we are not culturally sensitive to uh, the words what might local communities use already for many many years that have the same meaning, but at the same time, uh, they uh, are called differently, but, uh, or, or even uh, these uh, pushing for new words, new international words, like example, solidarity, might even mm. be a local conflict because uh, they, uh, they uh, create some kind of tension. So mm. um, this is something, my takeaway actually, is that uh, when we look for common words, we have to be very, very culturally sensitive and maybe allow people to use their own words rather than look for common words sometimes. Yeah. So, so the issue of principles is really imp important. Thank you. Thank you, thank you uh, very much. Um, Teresa, did you want to say something because you, You unmuted yourself at some point and I thought you wanted to say something. Yes, you go Teresa. Thank you. Bueno, eh, yo soy de Neuquén, Patagonia, Argentina, de la red de encuentro. Y quiero compartir que es una experiencia muy enriquecedora eh, compartir con otros países con experiencias de organizaciones que van llevando la pandemia, por ejemplo, con, con, tanta, con tanta fuerza, con tanta energía. Y lo que surgió en nuestro grupo fue la necesidad de reforzar algunos aspectos como eh, el derecho de las personas con discapacidad, eh, el derecho de los, de los pueblos originarios, y vemos que, que los principios desde los cuales, las formas desde las cuales trabajamos son las formas eh, democráticas en las que tenemos que reforzar las alianzas y repensar las alianzas estratégicas, porque esta emergencia ha hecho surgir nuevos actores que debemos reconocerlos e integrarlos en nuestras redes. Eh, también sentimos que debemos juntarnos nuevamente y legitimar nuestro rol, eh, creemos que el diálogo empático eh, nos ayudará a entendernos, a escucharnos respetuosamente. Sentimos que hoy hay que desburocratizar respuestas que se están dando en la sociedad y se necesitan respuestas creativas, innovadoras, porque eh, esta, esta situación de, de COVID nos ha llevado y debería llevarse lo viejo, para dejar venir lo nuevo, y, y esto nuevo es solidaridad, es reconocimiento de las minorías, es trabajo empático. Así que ha sido muy enriquecedor. Muchas gracias por el espacio. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much, Teresa. Gracias. Anybody else who would like to have a final comment, please just unmute yourself and, and go ahead to share. We have Christina and Timo waiting, Nubula. Okay, Christina will go with you and Timo will follow. 
Hola, buena, buenos días, buenas tardes de Uruguay, Cristina. Bye. Me sumo a, a los planteos de Teresa, que también estuvimos en, en el mismo grupo, y simplemente cortito sumar una de las cosas que me sí. parece muy importante, eh, que también hoy se planteó en la mañana, es la necesidad de, de acercarnos a, a las narrativas y a los discursos y a las necesidades de las comunidades. ¿no? Este, es como sumarnos como plataformas, como organiza organizaciones, a las necesidades y a los planteos de las, de las comunidades, para que realmente eh, nuestros planteos retomen esas necesidades, ¿no? y que los, los, los principios eh, que estuvimos conversando, que tiene que ver con, con esto de acompañar los principios de Estambul, tiene que ver con eh, la defensa de, de los derechos humanos, en todos los contextos y para todas las personas. Muchas gracias. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Cristina. Uh, I like what you say about getting closer to the narratives of of the people, of the communities um, that we that we support and and serve. Timo, can I invite you? Yes, thank you, Chair. Yes, um, and um, yes, um, buenos dias and uh, bon, bonsoir. Um, and uh, what we disc uh, what I spotted actually from another English speaking group's notes mm. really caught my attention because we a bit you know touch base as well that issue perhaps in other words when um, mm. it read you know that you should use rather a simple language if you like and not using too big words if you like in order to come and cross um, uh, come over and cross you know the different cultural borders and uh, that is so true that when we uh, have to as well build up you know sort of global alliances because we are dealing with the global issues and challenges so just to understand that you know it's sometimes it's a slow road to build up sort of you know understanding you know between different cultures and groups that you need patience and uh, I think yeah. what Alan in his introduction quite well said that if you want to go far and that's what we need to do as well then sometimes you have to accept that these things you know actually might take time to learn and understand what your other colleagues from other parts of the world really want to have to find finally that common goal. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. And, and to find that common goal, these cultural issues need to be navigated in, in min ways that are meaningful and helpful and respectful. Yeah. A final opportunity? A final opportunity for somebody Sorry. else? We actually yeah. have two people in, uh, waiting, so one of them is uh, Ahnu, and then the other is Iris. Yeah. Oui, bonjour à tous. Je vais parler en français. Je, je vais, mm -hmm. euh, du coup, euh, re, redonner un peu les, différentes, euh, euh, les différents résultats du, du groupe francophone. Donc, ça rejoint énormément ce qui a été dit. Euh, on, on a souligné comme euh, principe et méthode fondamentale la représentativité, l'inclusion et la diversité, euh, la transparence et la redevabilité, qui sont des choses extrêmement importantes, euh, en particulier quand les réseaux deviennent de plus en plus importants. Euh, un des membres a également souligné euh, qu'il fallait mettre l'accent sur l'humanité commune et que cette humanité commune, comme disait Rilly, elle peut permettre de vraiment aller au-delà de toutes les différences culturelles pour se concentrer vraiment sur ce qu'on a en commun euh, en tant qu'être humain, nos valeurs, euh, nos valeurs et nos besoins communs. Yeah. Et un dernier, un dernier principe, mmh. une dernière méthode, mmh. c'est vraiment euh, de s'ouvrir aux différences, euh, comme on l'a dit dans la, dans la session d'avant, et euh, savoir parler avec euh, des gens qui pensent différemment de nous. Donc ça, c'est pour euh, les méthodes et les principes. Et en termes de, euh, vraiment de méthode de travail, euh, on, pense que, euh, on pensait dans ce groupe qu'il faut vraiment faire des, restit des restitutions plus systématiques du, du travail de plaidoyer, de comment ça se passe et surtout, surtout souligner les victoires, souligner le positif, parce que souvent on entend trop de messages négatifs. 
euh, et souligner que le plaidoyer, ça sert à quelque chose et que euh, mmh. c'est important d'en mmh. parler. Euh, et comme disait Rilly, c'est très important mmh. de rendre les choses mmh. plus accessibles, d'éviter le jargon, mmh. d'éviter les termes trop techniques pour pouvoir vraiment avoir accès à tout le monde et parler à tout le monde, à toutes les communautés. Et la dernière méthode qu'il faudrait prioriser, c'est partir des besoins des populations toujours en mmh. premier, partir des priorités de la base et euh, ne jamais faire l'inverse. C'est-à-dire qu'il yeah. est nécessaire de partir du besoin des gens pour ensuite créer des stratégies yeah. plus générales. Voilà. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you to everybody who has shared. Just from what has been shared, um, it is, it's, it's very evident that, um, I mean, I'm reading through some of what has been posted here, what should, what should we be rethinking? And it is very evident to me that, <coughs> excuse me, that there's a lot of rethinking uh, uh, there's a lot of finding ways of doing uh, uh, differently uh, um, that, that, uh, that we as practitioners, as activists, as, as leaders need to take into our, our respective organizations, into our respective networks and into our individual uh, practices. Thank you very much. Let's leave it at that. Joyce, this is a very rich harvest. Yes, that's true. Can I just uh, give the floor, Novula, if you agree, to, Ir to Iris, um, since she had uh, raised her hand? Yeah, she had her hand up. Mm. Closing. Iris, nos escucha? Tienes la palabra, si quieres. Sí, les escucho. Yeah. Sí, er, era solo para rescatar ¿no? lo del grupo que también está ahí. Creo que es importante seguir insistiendo en, en la construcción de la, una agenda común, ¿no? Para apuntar, seguir apuntando a este tema de avanzar entre nosotras y enredadas es mejor entre redes, ¿no? Otro punto importante es que hay que repensar, rehablar, retroalimentar lo que entendemos también en, la, en su amplitud, lo que es democracia, ¿no? Vinculada a lo que es el Estado, vinculada a nuestro accionar también. Y eh, un punto que quería remarcar es no dejar de lado la politización, no sé cómo dicen en otros idiomas, pero politizar a las personas, estar atentos a la acción política desde sus necesidades, desde sus propias realidades, vinculado a la estructural. Creo que ese es un trabajo que desde las ONGs en la defensa de los derechos humanos hacemos cotidianamente, a veces bajamos la guardia, a veces no, pero no tenemos que dejar de lado esa politización, el darnos cuenta de nuestra realidad, frente a qué nos encontramos, todo. Y estoy de acuerdo, el lenguaje totalmente sencillo, ¿no? Y con los grupos y entre y con nosotras y nosotros y nosotres, ¿no? Y eh, de acuerdo en no alejarnos de todos estos principios que creo que hoy se nos ha refrescado para el conjunto de los que estamos aquí. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Thanks very much, Eris. Thank you. And thanks everybody for those contributions. I'm already, my things are running through my mind about <laughs> what needs to change in, in, in our own uh, practice and way of working and who we work with. Thank you very much. Joyce, over to you. Thank you, Nozia. Um, I think that now uh, we are 10 minutes uh, to the end of our call. Um, so what I'm going uh, to do is perhaps to ask um, uh, Unavula to stay with your camera on, ask Alan to jump in uh, with us so that we can make uh, the final thanks and, um, and a couple of invitations also that we have for you. So um, Alan, over to you first. Thank you, Joyce. I will be very brief. Uh, I just wanted to uh, thanks everyone for their energy and contributions uh, that are very, very valuable. Um, if you are interested in how we can do differently 
uh, how we do engagement with citizens, how we involve citizens, uh, how we can reflect on our organizations through transformative learning and education. I would use this opportunity to, to kindly invite you to join our network if you are interested. Um, it's a, uh, um, we would be very honored um, to welcome you there. So I will paste the link here and you can check us out. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Ellen. He's going to share, oh. Um, I'm going to unmute myself, yeah. So now you have the link on, on the chat. Um, so the next invitation that we have for you uh, is linked or not uh, with the writing exercise that Nuvula guided us through. Mm. Um, but it can go um, a bit beyond. Yeah. Um, you have on the screen already some uh, tips on what's yeah. that. Um, that is really a continuity um, and, um, and a closing of uh, a process of reflection that we did yeah. within for us. For, we're in the fourth year now uh, with several groups uh, on leadership um, and on networks. Um, so there are se several ways in which you could contribute, uh, but let me uh, give Nubula the floor to, to present that to you. As, um, most of the of the of the people on the on the platform would know that for us we in the process of producing and developing and writing a barefoot guide um, that that kind of brings together the the LDP program the uh, um, leadership development uh, program uh, the process has started we have people from the LDP uh, cycles who have already and are connecting and uh, are, are contributing. We are now extending the invitation to beyond just the people who participated in the in the LDP. And um, we really would like you as, as members of Forus, as, as activists and, and practitioners involved in in, in, in networks, working actively in networks and with networks, with social movements, with alliances, right? We are inviting you to please participate in the, in the, in the, in the Barefoot Guide uh, uh, process. Uh, Ivana, you've got to change the screen and take it back to the previous uh, screen, yeah. And these are the different ways in which we are asking people to participate. We are inviting those of you who would love to be interviewed to be to please indicate, send us your name and contact details and say you are you are offering yourselves to be interviewed. We just interview you and we will transcribe and refine uh, that into a written piece. We are asking people to contribute very short stories of about uh, 500 words, you know, sh stories that we can use to illustrate uh, um, some, of, some of the issues or concepts. Or those of you who are interested in writing longer stories, uh, say about 1,500 words, those who are of you who would like to, pre to, to offer case studies, or those of you who just want to write and contribute an opinion piece on some aspect connected to the theme. And the theme is looking at practices of building and supporting NGO networks, alliances, uh, uh, social and social uh, movements. So that is an invitation. I've put in the chat the Barefoot Guide uh, uh, website. It will tell you all about what a Barefoot Guide is and, um, and uh, the processes through which we produce it. So, it's an invitation and we're inviting all forest members, whether you were involved in the LTP or not. Thank you. We hope you're going to respond very positively. Thank you, Nuvula. So um, the way to get more information or to let us know that if that you are interested is the email that you see on the bottom of your screen. Uh, that um, I'll ask uh, colleagues to also copy in the chat because that may make it easier for you to 
to copy paste it. Um, okay, so just bringing us to, to the end of our conversation. Uh, I really wanted uh, to thank all of you um, for uh, uh, dedicating the time for the session um, to discuss about uh, our networks, our, uh, our dream to collectively build these aspirations that, uh, that we have towards a more just world. Uh, thanks so much for, uh, for being with us uh, during these two hours. Um, I want to thank especially, of course, uh, Bridge 47 and the Mentoring Association. Um, also the interpreters uh, who were in all the channels making a fantastic job in all directions and languages. Uh, so um, Aitana Mandiros, uh, thanks to you over to Madrid. Olivia Ocana, thanks to you uh, in Canada. Uh, Wendy Dubreu uh, in Paris and Ruth Polo in Mexico City. Thanks so much to, to the four of you. Um, I also wanted to um, invite you to check the rest of the sessions of the forum. Um, uh, if colleagues can place the chat uh, of the link of um, of our um, for us, uh, virtual forum on the chat, that would be great. And last but not least, uh, I wanted to ask you just to remain a couple of seconds at the end uh, to, we have one question survey for you uh, on the session, but please also feel free to share any feedback you, you want in the chat. Um, have a lovely uh, rest of uh, the afternoon, night, uh, and thanks again for joining us. Have a great, uh, have a great day. Ah, oh, okay. Bye bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you, all of you. Thank you, Joyce. Thanks, everyone.